Bitcoin's volatility is now in the bottom 5% of all weekly readings since 2015. And as Michael Saylor once famously said, volatility is vitality. So should we be worried about these falling swings? Or is this just the calm before the next major phase of Bitcoin's journey? Well, in this video, we're diving into some of my favourite volatility metrics, with a special focus on something called market entropy, which is the measure of chaos and disorder that often reveals where the biggest opportunities are hiding. It's a fascinating insight, and one that could change how we see Bitcoin's next major moves. So let's get into it. Since 2020, Bitcoin's volatility has been steadily trending lower, moving from the extreme swings we all remember to a much calmer profile today. And what's particularly interesting is that this compression is starting to align with traditional assets like US equities and gold. When we look at the rolling annualised volatility, Bitcoin, shown in orange, sits around 30%, gold at 14%, the Nasdaq 100 at 12%, and the S&P 500 at roughly 10%. This steady downtrend shows how Bitcoin swings are compressing and increasingly moving in line with the broader markets. In other words, Bitcoin is gradually behaving less like an isolated, highly speculative asset and more like a component of the global financial ecosystem. That means we need to start thinking about Bitcoin not just in isolation, but in the context of macro cycles, risk on risk off dynamics and its movements alongside stocks and gold. But before we continue, I just want to clear up a big misconception that pops up time and time again. Volatility does not equal risk. Just because Bitcoin swings are compressing doesn't mean that it's suddenly a safer asset. And conversely, higher volatility doesn't automatically mean extreme risk either. Volatility simply measures the magnitude of price fluctuations over time, while risk is about the potential for permanent loss or the likelihood of a catastrophic event affecting your investment. In my view, the risk of Bitcoin disappearing as an asset is now almost negligible. Back when I first started investing, that risk was far higher. Whether Bitcoin would even survive or continue its adoption was a genuine concern. But today, with tens of millions of users, institutional involvement, and nation-state adoption reinforcing the narrative, that existential risk has now almost vanished. That said, Bitcoin is not completely without risk. A 51% attack is always theoretically possible, and the eventual rise of quantum computing is something that will need to be addressed in the future. But in terms of the protocol disappearing or losing all value, well, that's almost negligible now. And if we think about risk in context, fiat currencies like your US dollars are arguably the riskiest asset you can hold, because it's the only place where you can guarantee a slow erosion of your purchasing power over time. Stocks give you a fighting chance to keep pace, but Bitcoin has historically guaranteed significant increases in purchasing power over any five-year period in its history. So when you view it in this way, it's hard not to start thinking of Bitcoin as more of a risk-off asset, even if the volatility often clouds many people's perceptions. Finally, as we'll see in some of the charts later, even during periods of lower volatility and calmer day-to-day -day movements, sharp moves can still occur. It's easy to become complacent when the market feels stable, but history shows that during Bitcoin's long consolidation periods, once the calm breaks, the volatility spikes can be extreme, and those are the moments you really don't want to be on the sidelines for. But we know those volatility spikes are very different from actual fundamental risk. So understanding this distinction between the two is absolutely critical if you're investing in this market. First up, we've got the volatility waves, which is built to capture and visualise the short-term volatility cycles in Bitcoin using log returns as the base calculation. It starts by measuring 7-day realised volatility, then smooths that signal with an exponential moving average to reduce the noise and highlight the underlying structure of the volatility trends. Put more simply, this tool takes the raw turbulence of Bitcoin's price and turns it into a set of waves that you can just easily read on a screen. We can see that, although these volatility readings are historically low, they're not actually all that uncommon when we look at Bitcoin's recent history. In fact, any time the waves have dipped down to these levels, it's often signalled a period of calm before the next sharp spike. These low volatility periods act like coiled springs. Market participants start to get complacent, positions build up, and the next move can come quickly and unexpectedly. It's a reminder that the market rarely behaves in a linear or predictable way. As a general rule, the market tends to act in ways that surprises the majority of participants, 
So these periods that are quiet are often the precursors to the next big swing, whether that's to the upside or the downside. But looking at Bitcoin's historical price action, the trend has generally been bullish. So if I had to lean one way, it would be upward. But as always, we need to be prepared for both scenarios. Next, let's take a look at the Volatility Fractals Indicator. Now, this measures volatility clustering through a lens of fractal pivots. But what exactly are fractal pivots? Well, simply put, they're points on the chart where the market makes a local high or a local low, essentially the peaks and troughs of recent price swings. The indicator detects these pivots and calculates a range between successive highs and lows to create a dynamic baseline. And then from there, it measures how intense the current price movements are relative to these recent structural swings. The lighter purple colours highlight periods of stronger volatility clustering, while the darker shades signal calmer, more subdued conditions. Put simply, this tool uses the market's natural swing points to show whether today's moves are unusually intense or relatively quiet. And it gives us a clearer sense of when volatility is concentrated into clusters or not. Now we can see here that we've got this interesting threshold around 30, and whenever volatility touches or breaks above this level, it's a clear signal that we're in the middle of a major breakout, either up or down. It's a key trigger point that gets me to pay close attention to how the market is behaving. And when we look at the biggest spikes above 30, these moments often coincide with periods where price action has gone completely wild, moving sharply in quick succession. For example, we can see such spikes during the major rallies of the last cycle, as well as the pandemic-induced crash. And then in this current cycle, the largest moves again occur during the most significant pumps and rallies. And this now brings me to another common narrative that I want to challenge. That institutional adoption has somehow tamed Bitcoin's volatility. People argue that Wall Street's involvement via the Bitcoin ETFs or the corporate treasuries has dampened price action. But the data, however, tells a completely different story. Even after these institutional milestones, some of the biggest volatility fractal spikes have still taken place. And what tends to catch most people off guard, however, is that after these large moves, Bitcoin often enters a long period of chop and consolidation as the market digests what's just happened. That's a feature that's fairly unique to this cycle, but it doesn't mean that Bitcoin's volatility has disappeared, and it's crucial to make that distinction. Now, looking at today's fractal readings, we're actually not even at the lowest levels we've ever seen. Over the past five to six years, there have been even quieter lulls. And what's important, though, is that these boring periods are often followed by explosive moves. The market rarely stays this calm for long, which is why I believe we're on the verge of another major move, whether that's a sharp spike to the upside or a sudden drop down to the downside. Now, finally, we're going to look at this really interesting new indicator that I've created. It's a bit more complex than usual, so stick with me. I'll try and explain it as simply as I can, but it's incredibly useful. This one is called the volatility entropy. Now, my background is in particle physics, so the concept of entropy is pretty intuitive to me. But for those unfamiliar, entropy is basically a measure of disorder, randomness, or just uncertainty in a system. Higher entropy means more disorder, unpredictability, and just more ways that a system can arrange itself, while lower entropy means more order, less randomness, and greater predictability. And in markets... High entropy is like a period of wild price swings. Prices are jumping all over the place and no one can really predict what's coming next. This is maximum disorder. On the flip side, low entropy is a calm, orderly market. Prices move steadily, patterns are predictable and everything just feels more structured. It's like Bitcoin in a long, steady accumulation phase where daily price changes are small and the trend direction is very clear. And just like in physics, markets naturally move between these two states. But for those of you that want a more technical explanation, this indicator applies information theory to market price movements by quantifying the unpredictability of short-term returns. It then bins the log returns into discrete categories and calculates a rolling Shannon entropy over the defined window, producing a normalised measure of market disorder. But putting all that simply, this tool really just measures how random the market is at any given moment. Now, the most interesting thing about all of this that I found is that the highest entropy events are actually where the biggest opportunities show up. So let's have a look at that. When the indicator turns lighter blue, it's telling you that the market is acting chaotically, whereas the darker blue colours reflect a calmer, more orderly condition. And if we look at the biggest entropy spikes of the past two cycles, 
we can see they've preceded some of the largest price increases in the months that followed. And that, to me, is fascinating. It shows that markets want to trend, and when the trend is upwards, it tends to keep going. So, as entropy rises, the market becomes more disordered, and when prices start trending again, entropy lowers and order is restored. And it makes sense too, because the market is the collective opinion of humans, and humans like predictability and structure. When disorder reaches peak levels, people don't like it to last. And this might explain why the sentiment across the Bitcoin space is so confused right now. Some people are calling for a bear market, others are saying we're only halfway through this bull run. But why such mixed views? Well, as we can see here, the entropy has remained incredibly high since around May of this year. And this whole summer has been filled with debates over where the market is headed. And that makes sense. The market is objectively disorderly right now, and no one can figure out what patterns are truly playing out. So while I can't say for certain which way it will move, because nobody can, what I can say is that high entropy events like this cannot be sustained for much longer. This disorder, randomness and just indecision will eventually resolve, and in my opinion will begin a clear trend again, whether that's up or down. So as we can see from this fascinating metric, the market likes order, and when chaos persists for too long, like it is now, big moves are never too far around the corner and I'm prepared for a breakout either way. So, to wrap things up, what we're seeing here with Bitcoin is that its volatility has been steadily compressing over the past few years. The extreme swings we all remember are becoming less frequent, and its price movements are starting to behave like more traditional assets like stocks and gold. This doesn't make the market more predictable, but it does mean we need to start thinking about Bitcoin not in isolation, but as part of the broader financial ecosystem such as considering macro cycles, risk-on, risk-off dynamics, and how it interacts with other major assets to help us frame Bitcoin's behaviour more realistically and plan our investing strategies more accordingly. At the same time, I think it's really important to separate volatility from actual risk. Just because Bitcoin's price swings are compressing doesn't mean it's suddenly a safer asset. And on the flip side, high volatility doesn't automatically imply extreme danger either. The true risk of Bitcoin disappearing or losing all value is now almost negligible in my opinion, especially when compared to the slow erosion of purchasing power you face with fiat currency. This perspective allows me, and hopefully you now, to see the price fluctuations for what they really are, just temporary noise, and not to get them confused with existential threats. And finally, when we examine this brand new indicator that measures the entropy of the market, we can see that those periods of high entropy i.e. the times when the market feels chaotic, unpredictable or just indecisive, are often where the biggest opportunities emerge. These moments can feel uncomfortable, but they usually signal that a major trend is about to take shape. And markets, like humans, naturally seek order. And when that order breaks down temporarily, macro mean reverting moves tend to follow. And as we can see with this indicator, chaos is clearly where the opportunity hides. And for me, the moments that feel the most uncertain, like this one, are exactly where I'm paying closest attention to the market, anticipating its next major move. And while forecasting the direction of the next major move is more like fortune telling, what we can say with a degree of confidence is that a major move is likely around the corner. If you're serious about Bitcoin analysis, my full custom indicator suite is now live. Built for investors looking to gain an edge through deep cycle signals and advanced on chain insights. It's available now through the link in the description, where you'll also find my free newsletter. And if you found this valuable, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so you never miss an update. And I'll see you all in the next one.